I could do a lot of things up here, but I'm just going to talk. Um, tomorrow is our first Lyft Chapel discussion today. So what we talk about today in Chapel, you guys will be discussing in your Lyft groups. But before we get into what exactly that is, I want to take you back to my childhood a little bit. So if you can hit the next slide. Every summer for pretty much my entire life, I spent at least a week or more in Alexandria, Minnesota. I don't know if you know where that is. It's west in the state, uh, but it's where my grandparents lived. That's their house up there in winter. I couldn't find a picture of it in summer, so imagine that without the snow. Uh, but they had a, a good amount of land up there. They also lived on a lake. And so a lot of our summers were spent up there, number one, spending time with our grandparents, but then also just doing all sorts of different vacation activities. Uh, if you hit the next slide, when I was young, that was my favorite activity. That's me and the cat, Patches. There was also another cat named Panda. Patches lasted about four years of my life and then got hit by a car. Panda lived till she was like 20. So I don't know what's up with those cats. One of them couldn't survive very long. The other one lived pretty much forever. I'm pretty sure Panda is immortal. But hey, uh, I really enjoyed the cat. Um, there were some other things we did up there too. If you hit the next slide, uh, a big activity was fishing. How many people like to fish out here? You know what I'm talking about, okay? I was horrible at fishing because I didn't have the focus. Okay, uh, I, I would get really distracted by the motor of the boat. I would get distracted by the minnows and the worms and all that stuff, and I just didn't have the patience. Now, I'm personally convinced that Lake Brophy, where my grandparents lived, there are no fish in that lake because I rarely caught anything. But when we did catch something, um, it, it was much celebrated, and my grandma would have this big spread, and she would deep fry all the fish, and it'd be a classic fish fry, and it'd be a great time. Uh, you can see me and my brother there with some fish. But my real memory, though, of that land up in Minnesota is, is my grandpa. And uh, my, my grandpa's a really special guy. He's awesome. Uh, I really appreciate him for a lot of different reasons. But I've always remembered him as a gardener. And he still is today. Actually, my grandparents have moved um, into the Milwaukee area, and they're back here. And, and gardening is something my grandpa still does. You've got to imagine this. He, he, it wasn't a garden. He called it his garden. It was basically a farm. Okay. He picked raspberries, he picked corn, he grew lettuce, potatoes, tomatoes, anything you can imagine, my grandpa knew how to grow it. It was his hobby, it was what he did, and you know, we, we ate really well because of it. And he would go out and spend like 12 hour days outside just working in the garden. He was so diligent with it, and it was amazing what I learned from him about gardening. And about the time it takes, and the effort that it takes, and the attention to detail, and all of this. And, um, it, it, it's really a reflection of who my grandpa is as a person. Because before he was a gardener, he was a teacher. And, and in a lot of ways, he is one of the biggest influences in my life as to why I ended up becoming a teacher, because he was always teaching me. Uh, my grandpa is a, is a quiet guy. He, he doesn't talk a lot, but when he does talk, the words that he used always carried weight. And, and I didn't always understand this, obviously, when I was really young and I was too busy playing with the cat or screwing around in the boat, but the things he taught me were really apparent in my life now that as I look back. Okay, one of the things I, I can distinctly remember is I would get so frustrated with fishing because we weren't catching anything that I would want to, you know, cast on the other side of the boat, okay? Or I'd say, hey, Grandpa, let's go to a different spot because there's obviously nothing biting here. And he would just kind of sit there and he'd be like, just be patient, just be patient, you know? Uh, and he'd just continue doing his thing. And I wouldn't be catching anything and then like every five minutes, quietly, my grandpa would just reel in another fish, take it off the hook, put it in the basket. And I'd be like, what in the world, man? How come I can't do that? And he would just do that again and again. He was just calm and quiet, and he would pull in these fish. And really, I think what he was doing was trying to teach me a lesson in patience. And, and, and as I continued to, to watch my grandpa throughout the years, you know, whether it's gardening or fishing or, or whatever it is, it became really clear to me that while it wasn't necessarily really apparent at the time, he was working on me, okay? As much as he was working in his garden or as much as he was fishing, he was actually working on me, and I think it was very intentional from him. And that kind of brings me into what our topic is for today. Our topic today is how we build a relationship with God. Now, I know that's really big and generic, and it's kind of like, well, what, what do you actually mean? But this is something that, as I've talked with a lot of the leaders, I think a lot of us struggle with. Because it's really easy to be a student at Lake Country Lutheran Okay, and be a Christian in that we're in the Bible every day. We've got chapel twice a week and all this. But you start to wonder, how do I actually personally connect to God? Okay, and so the, the, the analogy I'm using is my relationship with my grandpa. Because when I look back at this whole relationship, 
I wasn't the one building that relationship. He completely and entirely built it with me. Okay? Because regardless of where I was at in life, no matter what, I was always going to be up in Minnesota in the summer, and my grandpa was always going to take me fishing and teach me something about gardening, regardless of my current state in life, whether I liked it or not. That's just how it was going to be. Okay? I could have had a really messed up year at school. And grandpa still would have gone fishing with me. Right? I could be extremely disinterested in fishing, and yet he still would have taken me fishing. I could have had nothing to do with picking raspberries and corn, and yet he still would have said, hey, let's go pick this stuff. Because there were life lessons in there, and there was also just the quality time of being with his grandson that meant a ton to my grandpa. And, and I'm extremely appreciative of that. And, and I think in a lot of ways, that's how God's relationship is with us. And I don't think we always realize that. No matter who you are or what you've done, God wants to spend time with you, he wants to be involved with you, and he wants you to do the same. Okay, so our verse for today, if we go to the next slide, comes from John 15, verses 1 through 11. I think it's just another perfect analogy uh, of God and his relationship with us. Okay, it says this, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he is, is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's com commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. So this connection to my grandpa becomes really real for me because my grandpa is and was a gardener. And that's the same kind of analogy that Jesus has here about God, right? This vine dresser, or this individual who is growing vines. Now, if you know anything about the ancient world, especially uh, in, in Galilee and Judea, uh, the, the practice of making wine was really important to life, right? Wine was one of the, the most popular beverages of the ancient world. Part of that was because it was easy to make and it, was, uh, it, it tasted pretty good compared to a lot of the other things. So a vine dresser was a very important person. But growing vines can be really, really difficult because you have to know when to cut different parts of the vine and you have to know when to let other parts grow. Okay? Because in some ways, when you cut something off, when you take something, you remove something that's a hindrance, it allows the vine to grow in a different direction. But in other times, the vine needs to keep growing in different ways. So being a vine dresser is a very exact science. And in this analogy here that Jesus is talking about, as he and his disciples are actually walking through a vineyard, he makes it very clear that the vine dresser is God. God is the one who is crafting that relationship. It's not you. You don't necessarily have control over that. And so that might be a good sense of relief because really when you think about it, it's not what you do. You've got God completely invested in you to the point that he is clipping and pruning you in different directions so that the fruit that you end up growing is really, really good. Now that's assuming that you got Christ in you. Okay, because the second part of that analogy is that Christ is the vine and you are the branch that is extending off of that. And that's where this whole idea of keeping commandments, abiding in love comes in because that allows the vine to grow in the right direction and that the fruit that actually grows is good fruit. So again, I've experienced this kind of thing firsthand because watching my grandpa as a gardener, pruning and, and cutting and doing all these different things, it is an exact science. And I'll be honest, I know nothing about gardening. So it's amazing for me to watch my grandpa go through a garden and know the exact little sciences of where to plant something, how to water it, when something is right and need, ripe and needs to be picked. It's pretty incredible to watch. And so in the same way, God has that with us, right? He knows when you need to be cut down a little bit. He knows when there's something in your life that's going to sort of force you to grow in the right direction, as difficult as it might be for you. It might be a, a, a thorn in your life that's going to be used to help you grow into something good, right? It might be some awesome blessings, some really, really good fruit, some great benefits or gifts that are given to you that allow your life to be 
one that's extremely enjoyable. There's going to be a mix of both of those things, and God is constantly working on that with you. Okay, so I think a lot of times we sit here and we say, well, how do I build the personal relationship with God? What do I have to do? First thing you got to understand is you're not the one who's doing it. You got to recognize that God is gardening and growing you. So that should be a little bit of a sense of relief. Okay, and there's a lot of different ways in which God has started to plant, right, the, the, the flower that you're going to be or the vine that you're going to be. Okay, baptism is a great example of that where God calls you, he takes you. Right? Forgiveness, right? We're not deserving of any of that forgiveness. We're all really rotten sinners, and yet time and time again, he continues to forgive us. He gives us our scripture, which has very clear directions for how to live life. That's another gift that's given to you. All these different things come together and make it really clear that you're not the one who's doing the growing here. It's all God. Now, once you recognize that, and you recognize that God has invested personally in this relationship with you, no matter what you do, just like how my grandpa has always invested in me personally, whether I like it or not, there are some ways you can respond to that. And, and that's what I want you to start to consider as we walk into Lyft tomorrow, okay? Think about in your life, how can you respond to a God who not only knows you and created you, but who is constantly invested in your personal growth and having a relationship with you? Okay, I think first and foremost, you're here. You're here. You're at a place that is going to help you grow, that is going to aid in this gardening process, right? The fact that we teach the word every day, the fact that you are here in chapel right now worshiping, that you're with like-minded people, that's only going to help you grow that relationship. That's a great start. Now the question is, how do you make that a little bit more personal? Okay, instead of just letting it happen, how can you aid in that growing process? So maybe it's starting something like a personal Bible study. Maybe it's something that you know, you're just going to find a, a day during the week where you're going to get in the Word on your own. That's not in a class. That's not in chapel. Maybe it's increasing your prayer life. Okay? Maybe it's finding another way to serve your church or to serve your school or something like that. I, I don't know. I don't have that answer for you. It could be a lot of different things. But you need to think about it. Because your God is so invested in you, now it's time for you to invest in Him. Okay? There's so many different ways to do that. And throughout this year in Lyft, one of our running themes is going to be how do I continue to build that relationship through things more specifically like prayer, okay, like fellowship. All right, it's going to come up again and again, and it's an overarching theme that we'll talk about again and again. But most importantly today, I want you to remember that God is constantly gardening. Okay? He's constantly cutting and pruning your vine in a way that's going to continue to help you grow closer to him, to grow closer with one another, and to continue to be the person in the reflection of his wonderful creation. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you for this opportunity to speak. Um, and I thank you for all these kids. We're just so thankful that we have this awesome family at LCL. We're thankful for uh, the opportunity to continue to grow in you. And we're just thankful for that gift of a relationship you've given us. We're thankful for all the ways you show us that and you make that known to us as we continue to grow in you um, and grow together. Bless us throughout our week. Allow us to continue to glorify you. It's in your name we pray. Amen.